Adam and Eve. Previously in our story, we witnessed the creation of the universe. Out of chaos and nothingness, God made everything. He spoke light and life into existence. The glory of the skies, the galaxies, and the creatures of the earth were made by God and declared to be good. Now, we will learn more about the creation of man and woman, made in the image of God, inspired by the book of Genesis. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. In our previous episode, we heard about the grand unfolding of God's act of creation, night and day, earth, sky and seas, animals, plants, moon and stars, and humanity. Today, we take a microscope to the pinnacle of God's creation, man and woman, his image bearers. This is the story of the very first humans. As you listen today, pay close attention to how God creates man, how he stands apart from the rest of creation. Notice the great care God takes not only in forming man, but in providing for him in every imaginable way, including a suitable companion, one that was perfectly made for him. This isn't just the dawn of humanity, but the dawn of marriage. Listen for what this passage teaches about the design of marriage and the designer of marriage. Finally, you'll encounter a choice in today's story, a choice that God gives because he is not interested in forced worship, compulsory obedience, or artificial, superficial love. This story reveals God's heart to you, his care for you, his love for you. It's a story about his desire for you to be fulfilled by him and in him and for you to choose a relationship of trust with him. So come with me and let's take a look in Eden at the story of Adam and Eve and the perfect garden God gave them. The world was new and its refreshing mist was covering the land. Streams and rivers flowed from the ground, giving life to all plants and living creatures. Among the quiet and new earth, God was at work. Personally and intricately, God formed a man from the dust, as a potter does with clay. Then he breathed life into him. God named him and knew him. His name was Adam. God made a dwelling place for Adam in a garden called Eden. He placed Adam there, and it was filled with every tree that is pleasant and good for food. In this garden, man's relationship with God began, and with that relationship a choice of free will. There were two trees in the garden. One was the tree of life. The other was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God commissioned Adam, saying, You may eat of every tree of the garden, but not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For if you do, you shall surely die. This would be Adam's choice. For God does not desire relationship without free will. Adam was with God in paradise. He dwelt in the garden that was filled with all things good. Yet there was one thing that was not good. God said, It is not good that man should be alone. So the Lord caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. God, like a silent surgeon, took a rib from Adam's side. From this rib he formed a woman and breathed life into her. At this moment, Adam's loneliness was quieted and his soul and body was satisfied with her. Adam then sang to her and the two were married before God. To this day, This is why a man will leave his family and become united with his wife. They were naked and without shame, for there was no evil to corrupt the purity of their unity. They made love, ate the food in the garden, and cared for the earth and its animals. God was in the garden with them, and it was still good. Yet there still remained a choice to stray, a choice that would alter the course of all creation. The dawn of man. This was a different work of creation. For all other created things, God merely spoke and things that were not suddenly were. But for humanity, it was different. 
God took his own hands in the very dirt he had created and formed man in the image of his triune self. But he didn't stop there. He didn't just fashion man with his hands. He breathed his very breath, his breath of life into Adam. Then God created a special place, a garden for Adam. Did you notice the nature of God's relationship with Adam? This was not a created being without choice, without freedom. God created a true relationship with Adam, and so he gave mankind a choice. Two trees, one full of good and life, the other the path to broken relationship and an untimely death. And it was in this garden that God and man were to live in communion, knowing each other intimately. I imagine this garden as the very best of the very best. In a perfect creation, this was the most perfect place imaginable, where every single need Adam had was met. Every need except one, companionship and community. Our triune God knew that to truly reflect his nature, this man would need to, as he does with the Son and the Spirit, live in community. Up to this point, God has said everything was good, but looking at the lone man, he said it was not good. God created all the animals and brought them to Adam, who named each one of them, but none were a fitting match. You see, they were not part of Adam's own flesh. They were distinctly different. That simply would not do. So once again, God set to work in creating with his own hands. Genesis 2, and 23 records the moment when God gave Adam this beautiful gift of a companion. It says, And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. Then the man said, At last, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. God gave Adam a helper, a perfect pair to be with him for mutual satisfaction. Eve was created from man and together they lived in a perfect place, at least for now. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Today's story tells us something very important about our need for community and companionship. You see, whether you are married or not, God has created you to be in communion with others. It is not good to be alone. As God's image bearer, just like Adam and Eve, you are made to live in community, in unity, with others just as God himself exists in unity. And the highest expression of this unity is seen nowhere better than in the marriage relationship, created by God right there in the Garden of Eden. Likewise, this story shows you that God has given you a choice. Like Adam and Eve, you have before you the choice to follow God or follow your own desires. It is a choice between life eternal and death eternal. And it's the most important choice you will ever make. Dear Heavenly Father, just as you provided for Adam's every need, you continue to do so for us today. You have created us for community with others and with yourself, and we thank you for that, O Lord. Help us to choose you and your ways, God, the way of life everlasting in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love. By sharing this podcast, you can make a difference in someone's life. And if you want more resources on how to tap into God's power for successful Christian living, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.